Welcome. Welcome everybody to uh, today's workshop at NetForum. Uh, we have these every month on the uh, third Thursday of the month, usually, uh, obviously, just because of the way people's calendars are, sometimes there is a variation. Uh, but today we're very honored uh, to have someone who is with us almost on a daily basis, Arun Waklu. And Arun has been helping us with youth collaborating for compassion. But today he is bringing uh, us to a whole new venture, um, education today, society tomorrow. And um, as Arun said, um, I'm quite fond of education, having been in it most of my professional life. Um, as a fourth grade teacher, um, a teacher um, in a secondary school, a principal for a few years, a curriculum coordinator, and then for almost 18 years um, as a director of urban education for the associated colleges. So uh, it, it gives me um, palpitations when there are educators who um, are so interested in reinventing schools or rethinking schools or making schools um, a delight to attend. And I think that that's at the heart of everyone who's probably part of today's session. So I'm going to turn this over to Arun um, and encourage everyone who is here uh, to visit our website and maybe Menida could put up uh, the page for this particular offering and you can read more uh, about uh, the organization, the conference, Arun, Quran, um, and unfortunately not everyone who's going to be a presenter today, but we can certainly move to, to put up additional information. So Arun, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marilyn, and uh, deep gratitude to the Charter for Compassion, to, to you, to Merida, to Susan, and the whole team for giving us the opportunity to share on uh, education today and society tomorrow. Uh, as we are all aware, the, the world is going through quite a crisis and we welcome all the educators, teachers, the passionate people who love learning and education and co-creation here. So very hearty welcome to all of you. And uh, I also want to welcome the team who will be presenting and all of us, all of us in the team are people who have been touched by the message of education today, society tomorrow. We are not just going to be speaking from a theoretical construct or some something of the head. I think each one of us, each one of the speakers and presenters has been deeply touched and moved and you will hear their stories. I'm just going to take a minute to share a little bit more context and then for Kiran uh, will tell you more about how it began and what happened. But what I want to say right now is today, the way we are in is really the outcome of certain patterns of thinking. It is the outcome of certain character patterns or the absence of values and so on. And shaping the thoughts of people, shaping the character and values of people is really what education is all about. And in Education Today, Society Tomorrow, we have 30 years back, and Kiran will tell you the story, we have attempted to mold education in a way that we create the leaders of tomorrow who can actually shape a new world, create a more just, more sustainable, uh, more humane, more loving world, which works for everybody. So friends, uh, I'm joined here by the team, Kiran Gandhi, Rekha Shahani, Zareen Virji, Vijayam Karta, Dr. Sangeeta Srivastava, Malti Kalmadi, Sita Murthy, and myself. And as I said, many of 
of the people you'll be hearing from have been principals, have been award-winning educators, and above all, have been people who have been touched by uh, initiatives of change, who have been touched in the heart by the inner voice and will tell their story. So I'm going to invite Kiran to first uh, mm -hmm. share. And uh, so Kiran, over to you. Would you like me to continue the slides or? Uh, yes, please. To... Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. please. So <clears throat> uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's wonderful to see uh, new friends uh, on the screen today. Uh, wish I would be able to meet you all in person someday. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> uh, just thought uh, we'll briefly take you through the story of ETST. And uh, it all began uh, a little over 30 years ago uh, when uh, some of us, Arun, myself, and uh, other members of the National HRD Network of India and uh, uh, the Pune chapter of uh, the network were seated, you know, and having uh, sipping tea. And we were having some conversations about what our children are telling us about their experience of school. And uh, some very interesting exchanges took place. For example, uh, I said that uh, my youngest daughter who was in school, uh, one day came and reported to me that uh, my friend uh, got the highest marks in moral science by cheating from her neighbor. And uh, <clears throat> then she also said that many times our teacher says that now we are going to have a discussion. And when I raise my hand, you know, to express something, I'm told, put down your hand. Uh, Arun's uh, daughter, I think, uh, told him once that Dad, are you sure that uh, we who have to suffer school and after that you have to pay for our education? <laughs> so, <clears throat> we, we were just having these kind of exchanges and then we said to ourselves that uh, what kind of behaviors might be shaped you know, uh, of our children uh, with such experiences and then we were able to relate them with what we were observing in the corporate world because Aru and myself and most of the members of the National HRD network were part of corporate HR functions. And we were noticing you know, some of the behaviors like a lack of teamwork, uh, excessive competition, uh, not being too sincere you know, on the job. And then we said to ourselves, is it that the school education is playing a very important role uh, in shaping the values of tomorrow's adults? And these are the people we see in the corporate world. So taking uh, that kind of a discussion, it was sort of a brainstorming. Uh, we said perhaps the answer to the situations we observe lies in uh, teachers being role models to the children and also being creative educators and uh, not just you know uh, teaching or downloading you know uh, knowledge mm -hmm. so <clears throat> uh, that led to around the next slide uh, you know some we said let's do something and uh, so we no wrote up a note called HRD in the classroom. Uh, the idea was that uh, classrooms should not be just places where it is a one-way traffic, you know, and just knowledge being imparted, but it should actually lead to development, uh, holistic development. So we wrote a note uh, proposing, you know, some thoughts to the principals and sent the note to some principals in Pune, school principals. And uh, <clears throat> there was some interest shown and we met some of them in an exploratory dialogue, uh, which we held in Pune and some of the, I think about half a dozen principals, if I remember right, they came for a dialogue. Uh, and that led us to offer a workshop uh, for the school principals 
if I remember right, about 20 of them attended a workshop, which, uh, which was uh, called Teams, and it was short form for, uh, uh, I think it was what, uh, Teamwork in Education and Administrative Management of Schools. So that is the short form of it is Teams. The idea was that uh, the relationship between the principal, the teachers, the staff, uh, as experienced by kids, you know, plays a very important role in their understanding the value of teamwork. And, uh, and also it improves the way the school functions. So we did a workshop and the principals reported made a lot of sense. It, they need, need more teamwork uh, in the schools. Uh, and that sparked the idea in us uh, and that idea was of education today, society tomorrow, which we abbreviated as ETST. And uh, in, in the sort of uh, third quarter of, uh, in September, 1992, which is uh, just 30 years ago, we launched the first program, so the first workshop uh, on education today, society tomorrow in collaboration with uh, moral rearmament. Some of you would have heard of it. It was called MRA, a worldwide movement of people who want to bring change in the world through beginning that process within themselves. And now that movement is called Initiatives of Change. The idea was that they have this wonderful uh, center at a hill station called Panchkani in Western India, which is ideal for a program like this, you know, where it's a, it's a sort of a place where you can reflect on yourself, introspect, and then, you know, listen to each other and then come up with new inspiration. So this is the collaboration and the beginning of ETST uh, in the year 1992. So I'll now pass on uh, for sharing the next stage of the journey to Rekha, uh, who is from Mumbai. So Rekha, she, she, Rekha has been one of the most initial sort of uh, team members on this uh, journey. Over to you, Rekha. Thank you, Kiran. Good evening and good morning, everyone. Like Kiran said, uh, I'm from Mumbai. At that time, it was Bombay. And I will be referring at times as Bombay. It was that same year, 91, 92, that I took a step into education. Never thought about it. And it was simultaneously like these two engineers, there was a third engineer in their group called Mr. Dilip Michandani. And he introduced me to these two wonderful men and our journey started. And when the journey started, it actually started like a Hindi Bollywood movie, you see. It was a meeting in Bombay and Pune. So we used to travel every time by the train to go and meet these people in Pune and discuss about what education should be like. And uh, for people like us who focus only on education, it was a kind of an eye opener, I would say, because here were people from different uh, fields that were talking about education, who are looking forward uh, and thinking very broadly. So our meetings were not focused only on education per se, but the realities of life. It was focusing on issues. It was so focusing on matters that really, really mattered in the society and how we as teachers could make a difference. <clears throat> Through these gentlemen and a lot of other people of MRA, we actually saw education as a very broad framework rather than only curriculum and syllabus. We saw out of the box and things like that. Many of us also used to joke about it's not education today, society tomorrow, it is education today and studies tomorrow, you know, just to make a fun about it and make it interesting for the teachers and children and students. What started off only for the teachers actually spread out to students and to parents because we felt that even parents are involved in education and how do we have parent workshops and how do we talk to the students. It went to spreading to administrators, it went to spreading to trustees of institutions and things like that. So I come from a school which is located in Bombay. So in Bombay, my school became a hub kind of a thing for a lot of activities. And um, one of the activities which none of us can forget is we used to take role 
models. And in those days, the Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People was really, really famous. So we were asked to read that and we used to actually have, you know, sessions every week where we used to discuss how these seven habits could actually affect our life and make a difference. Little realizing that 30 years from then we would be all sitting together and planning out our celebration and talking to people all over the world. And what started as a local initiative actually spread out to different states in India. It spread out to different boards because in India we have a lot of languages Plus, we also have different kinds of boards. So we follow the Cambridge board, we follow the IB board, we follow the state board, we follow the central board. So what started as a little initiative, you know, has actually gone on to become a real great journey for us. We have met excellent educators. We've had two conferences, physical one also at Panchkani, which we collaborated with all of you, you know, with the Charter of Compassion two, three years back in 19, if I'm not mistaken. And the journey has been really, really nice. It has spread out. And it's for each one of us to decide whether I can be the role model. And many of us in this group feel that, yes, we are the greatest change makers and we will keep on making that change. So we can laugh at ourselves. We can laugh with people and the family is growing beautifully. And we are looking forward that educators like us will actually build a better society, not only in India, but across the world. Thank you. Over to you, Zareen. Thank you, Rekha. And uh, greetings to everyone. Um, I think uh, the interesting thing was that after these two men, Kiran and Arun, had this initial thought uh, some of us uh, just came together uh, and a core team evolved. Uh, so there was no hierarchy, you know, there was no leader who was saying this needs to be done. But it was a very no natural, organic growth uh, that some of us just felt called uh, to carry this forward. Uh, to organize future programs, to introduce, uh, you know, apply the thoughts in our own institutes and so on. Uh, because today we were discussing that how did this core team come up and we thought we really don't know how it happened, you know, it just emerged. Uh, and it has added uh, members. Uh, so now we are we have expanded, we are strengthened, and uh, we are spread in different parts of India, uh, which again gives its own flavor. Uh, we have had people also from other parts of the world uh, who have been almost part of our core team. Uh, Arun, if we can see the slide on the vision. Uh, so, after, I think over the years, we felt we need to spell out our vision. And so now we say it is to create a just, peaceful, compassionate, and sustainable world through meaningful education. I think that's where uh, the emphasis uh, lies, uh, that we want uh, schools to be happy spaces, uh, not uh, the kind that children have to suffer through, uh, and uh, spaces which give children, children and teachers and everybody associated with schools uh, time to think, to be, to create. I think that is our uh, passion and what brings us together. And therefore, our mission then is uh, to bring about positive changes again in the way any individual all the stakeholders uh, that schools have you know uh, the way an individual thinks perceives learns interacts uh, to make very profound uh, changes where we are talking of development of a personality and not just uh, exams and grades. Uh, this 
again led to what we feel is the kind of essence uh, that we are looking at. Uh, and we have come up with the five uh, fundamentals. Um, so as part of initiatives of change, we believe a great deal in reflection and introspection as Kiran told us, uh, because that is the way to self-awareness. Uh, and a self-aware educator uh, will be able to move mountains. Uh, of course, an institute like that has to be based on ethical principles. Uh, otherwise, it is meaningless. Uh, it would just be talk and no walk. Uh, so certainly we believe in walk your talk. And so whether it is admitting students or it is recruitment policies or whatever it is, the whole package uh, has to be based on ethics. A school like that definitely would believe in loving kindness, uh, which would permeate all the layers uh, from the head of school to everyone, you know, uh, in the way people communicate, in the way people relate with each other, that kind of respect and compassion and inclusivity. Which brings me to the respect for diversity. Uh, and here again, we are talking, of course, as we all know, India is such a diverse land. Uh, so we are talking of the languages and the religions and so on. But not only that, we are also, of course, when it comes to children, very important, we need to talk about uh, that there are all kinds of children in a classroom. Uh, and we need to provide an education that reaches out to every single child in that classroom. Uh, so that is our, uh, you know, another fundamental. And then, of course, uh, the whole belief that uh, schools need to be centers which can serve society. Because we do believe that when we are young, uh, you know, and this uh, sense of service is instilled in us, uh, that is very beautiful, that will last a whole lifetime. Uh, so you will hear different initiatives, how uh, society has been served in different ways through schools that have been sparked uh, with the ETSD message. And therefore, uh, I come to my last point, which is our motto that we do want to uh, co-create uh, uh, schools which are different, you know, uh, reinvent schools and rebuild the world. And that's why we... Uh, feel we share much in common with the Charter for Compassion, and it feels great to collaborate uh, with you in this task. Uh, having said that, can we have the song, Arun? It's better to light one candle. A lot of the work in uh, ETST is based on songs, and one of the popular songs used a lot is this one, which I'm going to play for all of you now. So here goes. How many times I'm back to away so often told others I'd be counted on and left them all betrayed. I said there's nothing I can do in a world that's turned to so sad, where the hope of freedom is fading by the hour. But it's better to light one candle than to curse the
afraid to leave the shadows, afraid to face the cost. It's better to light one candle than to curse. Thank you, Arun. So um, all of us heard about uh, how education today, society tomorrow, the group began and what is the vision, mission, motto, etc. I would like to share what happens, what is the impact a typical ETST training can uh, create on its participants. Uh, it was 1992 when I first attended one of the training programs at uh, initiatives of change. It was like homecoming for me because the sort of songs which they play, like the one you just heard, it's better to light a candle. And the, a lot of personal stories shared by the resource persons and the adage, be the change you wish to see in the world. All these things had a great impact on me. I was a young, uh, inexperienced principal shy, timid, scared. And I thought that my job is to run a school, to manage the students, ensure that they perform academically uh, well and they have a good character. I did not think much beyond that. And as a, an individual, as a sensible person, I also used to do a little bit of introspection and reflection. But what I experienced at uh, the training center of initiatives of change was something very, very different. When we were asked to sit quietly for five to 10 minutes and weigh our life against the four absolute principles of purity, honesty, unselfishness, and love, and see where you stand, where each one of us stands, that brought a lot of self-awareness in me. I realized that I used to think that I am a good person. I had my own insecurities, my own complexes, but I met myself as many participants keep saying at, after every uh, ETST training program. And I realized I was uh, going through a very sad phase uh, during that time. I had taken over as the principal and my teachers rejoiced when I took, when I became the principal. After three, four months, I saw that uh, uh, they started avoiding me. My colleagues started avoiding me. They were not very happy to see me. And I was uh, blaming them. I thought, you know, I am a good principal and I want to make this school a better one. And they don't want to work. That's why they don't like me. That was my thought. But during the quiet time at uh, uh, the training center, I realized that I was not a leader, I was a boss. I was dictating my terms. I was 
imposing my dreams and visions on my uh, teachers on my colleagues no without even asking them their opinions and uh, those three days uh, reflective practice showed me a way forward when i went back to the school i invited my senior most teacher into my room and made her sit and i asked about her family her well being and then asked her Uh, to share some suggestions for the well-being of the school, I did it with uh, the the I I finished with five teachers. By the time you know, the sixth one had to come in, one of my colleagues said, "You know, the teachers feel you have changed after attending this uh, uh, training program at this place," and I was very happy. And uh, from that time onwards, the relationships in our school. Uh, became better we started feeling like a family i i think to a great extent i became a leader from my boss i started listening more compassionately to all uh, stakeholders and my continuing with the quiet time practice and following the uh, absolute principles of purity honesty and selfishness and love combined with compassion showed me a, a new path i was scared uh, to take up some new initiatives all the time i used to worry what people will think but this uh, quiet time practice and adherence to these principles gave me a lot of courage to um, um, tread the road less traveled as a principle our school i we could uh, take up uh, village development programs Uh, we could open our uh, campus to uh, the underprivileged children we even implemented an invigilation in less examination so we did a, uh, quite a number of best practices unheard of during that time in the early 90s i will give the credit uh, for all these uh, ideas to uh, this philosophy and i also found that not only ideas people and opportunities started presenting themselves in my life to reach my purpose and this quiet time practice also uh, showed me the purpose of my life i learned it's not to run a school it's to help my students to grow up as happy successful compassionate and socially responsible human beings Uh, so meanwhile the etst training program started happening regularly uh, uh, teachers from across the country started converging at our headquarters in maharashtra for these training programs a lot of best practices sharing happened we did uh, document most of these practices which are available for any uh, educator to uh, fall back upon and uh, uh, from the training programs our work um, extended to uh, having round tables for educators at different cities of the country we started a, a pan india network of eco clubs uh, with uh, all these things happened with one intention reinventing schools and rebuild the world Uh, in pune uh, where the uh, city which i belong to uh, it's uh, called a compassionate we call it a compassionate pune it's a compassionate city uh, we have started a program called tuesdays for tomorrow so every third tuesday we meet on zoom and uh, schools uh, share their best practices and uh, we all learn from each other and we are growing together and there is a lot of uh, collaboration and cooperation happening among schools which is something wonderful uh, which is something uh, not which was not very uh, uh, much in vogue in the past so the journey is on we are on our journey to reinvent schools and rebuild the world to create a more compassionate world thank you so much for listening i request my dear friend dr sangeeta srivastava to take it forward thank you
Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Hello. So, I'll share my experience with my uh, ETSD conference that I attended for the first time six years back. I had no idea what kind of program it would be. I had gone there with expectations of a conference that I had been attending previously at several forums at local, national, or international levels. It was such a pleasant surprise for me the way sessions were conducted right from the introduction to the center visit to the last session of the certificate distribution and the commitments. Especially the early morning sessions of uh, soul nurture and uh, the balance sheet of life were impacted me a lot. I regretted how come I never knew about this place for so long. I had been an educator for almost 26 years in Mumbai. I can say that during this period, there was a feeling of burnout due to a large number of students in my school. Um, almost 9,000 students, so many parents, teachers, enormous amount of administrative and legal work. I had started feeling as if I'm not able to reach out to all the all concerned and felt as if I'm a robo rushing mindlessly always to meet some of the other deadline. Always felt shortage of time. So it was my first such experience of the um, five days program that uh, had sessions right from 7 a.m. in the morning up to 9, 9.30, full of enthusiasm and freshness. I wondered how much can be packed into a day without feeling tired. So after coming back, I reflected and uh, realized how busy and immersed I was in a day-to-day -day running of school that I had no time for even myself or listening to my inner voice. Sitting quietly and listening to my inner voice had a deep impact on my overall attitude, value of building inner strength and balancing the life. Building assets by improving my relationships, reducing the liabilities, developing inner strength. It dawned on me in my quiet time that I must utilize my early morning time for most challenging tasks. I started with a fresh mind. I changed my schedules and tried to fit in things I wanted to do the most at that time in the morning, like trying to meet all my parents at least twice in an academic year. It was a huge task, but I was able to accomplish it in two months time, meeting almost all the 6,000 parents in early morning meetings. It had such an amazing outcome not only for my school, but also for myself. As an individual, the kind of satisfaction I got, I don't have words for it. And this has become a habit now. I focused on a few takeaways that would be most impactful when implemented for students and teachers, like introducing quiet time and listening to the inner voice and then sharing uh, in the entire school at a given time every day for the last six years. Even during the lockdown, we used to conduct that. I would request uh, Aranji to share that slide where you can see few classrooms where all the students at a given time will just sit quiet for five, two, six, seven. It depends on how it goes on. Sometimes it even goes on for 10 minutes and everybody is happy to take out time from their respective periods to give it for this. The sharing that happen become very, very powerful. Uh, my teachers have introduced quiet time practice in classroom after teaching a topic, having a moment of silence at our field trips, educational excursions. Even at the NASA trip, we used to have uh, sit quietly every night after dinner and do the sharing with students and teachers. During rehearsals, at the backstage in the, uh, in the, on the annual day celebrations, I can say it is very, very effective. Most of the activities we used to do so far took a new shape by incorporating more sharing and compassion by teachers and students. Uh, with my teachers and students have been conducting workshops for all the students on the topic, Be the Change, that includes relationships, India I Care, Character Bank of India, and the Conversation Cafe. 
uh, we can show the next slide of uh, Character Bank of India, where children deposit character slips. This has benefited thousands of students in the last six years during the COVID-2. I have seen that these are the most powerful and lifelong learning sessions that encourages reflections and resolutions by the participants. There is a respect for diversity. I can ask uh, Arunji to show that classroom picture, a typical classroom of our school where all kinds of children, they help each other. And uh, the last slide I would, yeah, this is a typical classroom. You can see there is a handicapped mm -hmm. child which has been lifted by a student. So. Uh, I can say that we are trying to improve the culture of school. Uh, since we do not have a uh, space in the campus, much space, we use one of our trustees' uh, beachside house, bungalow, which has a lot of greenery to conduct some of these sessions with students and teachers. Um, I can say that our management also supports this activity because they see the results. Uh, we have been sending teachers from KG to 12 for ETST conferences and almost 65 of them have experienced these conferences so far. And one of my teachers, when she came back from the conference, she pasted a you know placard behind her uh, seat saying, I'm here to listen. And says that we all should send our teachers, more teachers should go and we need more changes. So I can say that uh, we are learning a lot from IFC principles of CCD, that is, connection with self and others, correction wherever needed, and then seek direction within ourselves. So this was what I wanted to share in short. And uh, now I'll request Ms. Malti ma'am to share her story. Ms. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Sangeeta. And I'm sorry that uh, my video is not uh, showing up. But well, um, I would like to share my story. Uh, my introduction to uh, ETSD, this beautiful space, was actually by Arun and by Vijayam. Both of them are responsible because they uh, had a, um, just now what uh, Vijayam was talking about was the round table for principals. And um, actually uh, Arun said, Malti, I would like you to come. So I was very curious. I said, round table for principals? You've heard round tables for others, but for principals, um, nobody had taken the trouble to start a round table for principals. So I said, okay. And Arun does always lovely things, you know, whenever he has a workshop. So I was very curious and I said, okay. But unfortunately, my principals were not free in the morning time. And uh, so I went alone. I, I told my principals, because ours is a large institute, I said, you can come whenever you are free, but let me go. So I went ahead and when I saw the um, program that was being rolled out, I thought that this was the right space. And that was my introduction to actually ETSD. And then Vijayam told me, Malti, you must come for this retreat. We hold it, Asia Plateau. And uh, I said, okay, we put, I finished one round table. Now let me go there and uh, <clears throat> uh, see what's, um, what happens at the Asia Plateau. And when I went there, I was floored by the experience. Because actually it helped me carve out time for myself towards reflection and self-inquiry. And I thought that maybe so far I was not ready for such a thing. And I totally believe in the divine grace. And uh, I felt very grateful that um, I was in this space where I could uh, look at myself and um, Really, that shifted me from a space of me because I uh, head a large institute. We have about 9,000 students right from kindergarten to a college, undergrad and a post-graduation college. So from the space of Kaveri group of institutes, my vision went towards we. It went towards my nation. And um, I felt that there were activities at uh, ETST 
especially the quiet time, which was um, influential in the my change and uh, life's balance sheet. That was an activity. Circle of concern and circle of influence. I, whenever I see Kiran, I only think about that activity because he really knows how to conduct that activity. So many times I keep telling my staff that try and get Kiran to do that activity. And the other activity which uh, I loved was India I Care. Because I, till then, you know, I thought about my nation, but I never deeply went into expanding my vision. So that was really transformational. And uh, just the uh, Vijayam has just now shared with you about uh, Tuesdays for tomorrow. This is a Pune chapter of ETSD because many educators are not able to go to um, Asia Plateau. So we said like, um, let us open a Pune chapter. And I'm very happy to share with you that this chapter is very, very robust. And in fact, yesterday, I took my entire counseling unit to a school, which is part of the um, uh, Tuesdays for Tomorrow, just to study their counseling unit, because I found that their counseling unit, career counseling and remediation program was good. So uh, we created the buddy school system and uh, uh, also, the Urban Rural Connect, the Gram Setu project with Grampari, and above all, I must share with you the Golden Rule Day program, which we initiated at the uh, Dr. Kalmadi Shamrao High School, Ganesh Nagar. And uh, when An Arun came with this proposal, I said, why not? Let's start because we need to start it from the kids' level. And it is this Charter of Compassion's program that uh, we initially started the Zoom program. Till then, we didn't know what was Zoom. But then, thanks to, it was in 2019, Arun, that we started. So it was a fantastic yes. program. And there was a lot of learning, you know, the, the impact it created, not only with the students, but it created even with the uh, teachers. They said, oh my God, why so much of enmity? And, um, we were able to carve some um, pathways through these programs. And we also conduct in our school, the mindful parenting program. So these were some of the initiatives and um, the five fundamentals of an ETSD school. We are trying to really see that the Tuesdays for tomorrow schools all um, imbibe these fundamentals like respect for diversity, <laughs> compassionate service to society, and um, self-awareness. And um, um, I really uh, thank um, the Charter for Compassion for initiating this program, and we are with you. So thank you very much. Sita, thank you. I would request Sita now to continue. Thank you. Sita, you're on mute, Sita. Sita, you're on mute. Yeah, yeah. she's just- So thank you, Maliti. And uh, after hearing everyone, I was wondering, what do I share? Because everybody said everything. So, but I'd like to say one thing that I'm a dreamer. I'm, 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 I'm highly ambitious for the students that I'm responsible for. So for, it was back in 2015 that I first had this experience of uh, being with ETSD. Well, everybody explained uh, what ETSD stands for and uh, how does it uh, happen and what ex workshops they conduct. But I must tell you, for any mission or any purpose, people have to breathe life into it. So for me, the people that I met at ETSD are very important. Uh, until then, I used to think like, you know, I'm the only one who's dreaming things like, education today, society tomorrow, that I have to build character in my children. It's not, for me, it's not important if they don't do math and science, it's okay. But if they're dishonest and if they're not uh, principled and if they're not open-minded, I'm not okay. 
So this is the way that I was running, uh, heading my schools with about 8,000 children. And everybody used to look at me like an odd man out, thinking that you're too much of an idealist in a world where competition and grades and marks stand out more than anything in education. I didn't really mind being the odd man out until I met the people at ETSD. It kind, of, it kind of gives you reassurance that there are other dreamers like you. There are other people like you. And what really interested me about all of them who spoke before me, I have to tell you this, is that they've been volunteering. Now it's 30 years. They've been volunteering. And that word voluntary in capitals. Okay, They've been volunteering to bring change into schools, to redefine what is education, to make values as the most important thing. So that stayed with me. And I've always been telling all of them, whether it's Arunji or Kiran or Zareen, Rekha, Vijayam, Fatima, who's not here, uh, and uh, Sangeeta, who's here now. I've been telling one thing that it's the people who can breathe life into a purpose or a mission. And only when people like this can come together, volunteer, spare their time in this busy world, Sparing your time itself is a great service and time for making a change voluntarily. I think that is something very, very uh, uh, defining moment for me when I met these people. And I continue, and I know this is my retirement plan, by the way, I'll be with ETSD when I actively retire from my, from my schools. So right now I feel I'm very responsible for about 8,000 children in my schools and I, I have to build their character. And I have to be the first learner. I have to know what is the value of quiet time, what is the value of reflection, and what is the value of, what does it mean to be honest? You know, there is a saying which many of you would have heard, the destiny of a nation begins in its classrooms. And I sincerely believe my teachers and I are the architects of that destiny. Only when I went to ETSD, I felt very reassured that there are people like me who believe that we can create a better society. So I will continue my association, my active work with ETSD. And when I really retire from my active work, and I think I'm going to contribute much more to the mission of ETSD in rebuilding the world. So that's all I have to share, Arunji, over to you again for the mission you. you started. I Thank hand you. over the baton to you. Thank you so much, Sita. So uh, friends, uh, I think the, uh, I, I'm just echoing what Sita said. It is the authenticity and the deep conviction that all of the people you heard uh, that brings, that touches people's hearts. I think it, it gives goosebumps to people when you hear testimonies like what you just heard from Vijayam or Kiran or you know, Sita or Zareen. I think that is really the heart of the matter. And somehow, you know, that authenticity, that integrity, that honest, transparent sharing uh, somehow touches the heart. I mean, having seen this at work, it is something that really makes a difference. I'm just going to share one or two stories and then sort of conclude. You know, I remember in one of the ETSD conferences where we were using open space technology, which we use a lot of. And a little girl, three-year-old girl called Meetu said, uh, I also want to put up a, a little placard. You know, I also want to offer a topic. So we said, okay, Meetu, come along. What do you want to offer? So she said, I want to offer the topic, follow me. And uh, so fair enough, it went up on the agenda wall and some principals signed up and some mother superiors uh, with their habit and they, they signed up and some people came and 11 o'clock outside the foyer at Isha Plateau, this crowd came together because they had signed up for Meetu session, follow me. And the next thing they know is Meetu starts running down the road. So they, they had signed up voluntarily. That's how it works in open space. So they all started running after her. And then she found a plot of grass and she just slept on the grass. So all the principals and teachers and everyone had to follow her. And then a butterfly came along and they started running after the butterfly because Meetu started doing that and it was all follow me. At the end of it all in the evening with tears in their eyes, 
they said this is the first time in our life we saw the world through the eyes of the people we are supposed to teach and they have she has taught us mitu has taught us so these kind of magical things happen in etsd i think all my colleagues would say that some magic happens on the dining tables in the gardens uh, in the quiet time and so on i just want to share one or two points i think uh, this was men mentioned by uh, malti just as the seeds of etsd were sown 30 years back i think the seeds of youth collaborating for compassion actually happened when the golden rule day two or three years three years back thanks to susan and madeline we got people from karachi young children from karachi to talk to young children in pune so it happened once then it happened again and it happened several times and people were amazed and then we suddenly realized that compassionate schools the etsd schools all over the world can begin to have these kind of exchanges and young people can begin to collaborate for compassion so in a sense the seeds of the next phase of etsd have already been planted we're very grateful to, to the charter uh, incidentally ifc is a deep uh, partner of the charter and many ifc sites in the world whether it's netherlands whether it's australia or other parts of the world have been offered for compassion programs and i think that really summarizes what it's all about it's about collaborating with each other completing each other not competing with each other and for me one of the most satisfying things has been to see the way the principals and teachers of different schools in pune and in india have started collaborating they're actually vying with each other to share the best practices and as malti said tuesdays for tomorrow one other thing i'd like to share with you with all of your friends is that youth today are in a bit of a crisis i think there is a huge crisis of images a crisis of putting up a facade on social media of thinking that likes is really relationships of for instant gratification and so on and especially millennials people born after 1984 are are really suffering and in the charter susan marilyn merida many of us who have heard these voices know this is a lot of suffering so can we can we teachers collaborators get young people to collaborate all over the world listen to the inner voice listen to inner guidance and co-create a world that works for all so this is the dream and uh, all of us in etsd the charter and all our will be working towards this and i'd like to share in conclusion i just like to share a song before we open it out for question and answers uh and the song is basically about images it's about images it's in the sense that what is keeping us from being our authentic self what exactly is keeping us from being our authentic self so i'm going to offer this little song uh, and please bear with me till i fire it up and then we will have question and answers after that so just give me a moment just uh, firing up the song for everyone it's called images it's a lovely poignant song about how many times we mask ourselves we we you know don't really uh, stay authentic and this is one of the themes that is very strongly brought out in etsd so here's the song for you friends and then we'll have the question and answer there are images i hide behind so the real me is hard to find the delusion begins in my mind caught between the real and make believe i know i'm the one i most deceive but i guess that is the way life has to be
listening and it's time now for question and answers so i will keep a watch on whatever you want to say and please raise your hand and kiran will keep a watch on the chat box so you can even put your questions in the chat box or you can just put up your hand and we will uh, take your questions and happily respond to them and i will point them to someone yes so the floor is Arun? open Friends, yes, uh, Kiran. Shall we just be silent for a minute just to absorb the lovely experience idea. and then we can uh, ask questions? Beautiful idea. That's lovely. Okay, so friends, about two minutes of quiet time. So you can just mute your mics and let's go for it. So I I like to ask something. How, how long are the are the uh, courses that you give to the people? Yeah, Christina, just the request, just for one minute more. Let's just be silent, okay. and then after that, we'll, okay. yeah, we'll take your question after that. Maybe we can begin. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. So, Christina, please, your first question. Yes, I was, I was wondering how long would it take, you know, each of those courses that you present? Right. Okay. So, uh, Kiran, would you like to respond to that, please? Yes. How long uh, is the yes, program? The, uh, the typical duration that we have is... Uh, four days um, and uh, yeah, we start on the afternoon of day one and um, maybe finish on the afternoon of day four. But we also have sometimes done for uh, done the course for five days. So we have experimented with four days and five days. We find the longer one is more uh, effective, but then uh, very often the Educators have difficulty sparing, you know, five days. So we have sometimes uh, fallen back to four days. Okay. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Kiran. Uh, yeah, I've also requested, yes, Ole, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for sharing. It's uh, impressive and I, I cannot... I can feel the good energy of uh, what you are um, uh, have been through and what you are part of. Uh, and I'm curious, uh, how is this uh, spreading in India? Uh, what is the uptake, so to speak? Is this seen by kind of the the school systems, or are you are you more in local or? A movement yeah. in the corner. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good question. Uh, Zareen, would you like to respond? Zareen and Vijayam, if you can mm. speak to that. Ole, incidentally, is in Sweden. He's a mm. wonderful person who has made the map of co-creators, which if you could put in the chat box, that'd be nice, the link. Yeah, Zareen and Vijayam, please. Yes. Um, so I would say um, we have uh, reached out uh, and we have uh, impacted uh, some schools in rural areas uh, with government collaboration. Uh, at one point, uh, the education secretary uh, has also, you know, been part of our work. Uh, so there have been different uh, times. Uh, we have collaborated with the NCERT, which is the National uh, Teacher Training uh, Body. Uh, and we worked with them to bring out a document on value education. Uh, so there are various uh, times where we have gone into a kind of national framework. Uh, Vijayam, anything you want to add? I including the number of schools who are connected with us in this. Yeah. Mm, Vijayam. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the last 30 years or so, we must have uh, impacted uh, more than uh, 5,000 participants through our various programs. So there must be around uh, 400 to 500 schools, which must have um, attended these programs. Uh, because the core team members are all working people, like our work uh, was not that in a very uh, you know, bigger uh, proportion. But at this 30th year, we plan to expand our work. We want to uh, reach out to more and more schools. We, we, are, uh, we are having our celebrations in the month of December from 4th to uh, second to fourth, uh, sorry, fourth to sixth. No, I'm, I'm sorry. So, uh, oh, sorry. Second, I'm to second to fourth. Second yeah. to the fourth. Second, second to the fourth. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going to miss it, so I'm confusing the date. So uh, during this time, we are planning to uh, do uh, some serious action planning to reach more and more schools. Mm. Uh, but so far, uh, uh, we could... Um, you know, reach up to around 500, 600 schools, but it has to be much more we realize and we are planning to take real action for to reach our bigger goal. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Vijayam and Zareen. Uh, and probably one of the routes could be training of trainers who can then subsequently facilitate these programs anywhere in the world. That could be one of the things. But yes, Charles, please go ahead. And thank you for your appreciative comments, Charles. After that, we'll hear Susan. Mm -hmm. Yes, Charles. Uh, you just have to unmute, Charles, so that we can hear you. Uh, Charles, I thought you had raised your hand. Yes, please, go ahead. Sorry, yes, Rune, yes. it's the, uh, the mute got me. <laughs> oh, no problem. <laughs> my no my problem. apologies for the video being off. Uh, some medical issues here, uh, but I was just wanted to share how struck I was with, uh, and please forgive me if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, Vaj Vajaram. Um, Vijayam. 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 Um, but I really appreciated uh, what you what you had to say. All the testimonies were fantastic. But what struck me about yours is the aha moment, the aha moment that you had when you realized about the power that you had power over um, that you could say my way or the highway, but you realized that that wasn't the best way to uh, make the kind of changes uh, that, uh, you know, that ETST is trying to encourage uh, throughout throughout the school systems in India. Um, and I couldn't help but think about what we are currently doing with CIT. Many of you are probably familiar with compassion integrity training, but uh, they're adding a couple more skills uh, <clears throat> to the last section 
on changing or transforming systems. And one of the skills is power, power over, uh, power within ourselves, power to do something, to take some action, and power with. And there's ongoing discussion right now about how do all of these connect with each other? And how do they reflect our human nature? And how can we, with a deeper understanding of these levels of power, be able to then go out and be more effective in the work that we're trying to do to transform the world from uh, a self-centeredness to a other-centeredness world, which I believe we're all in the business of, of, trying, of trying to do. Um, and yeah, and also I was struck by the four day versus five days, because uh, what we're realizing is that the longer the experience takes place, the more likely as one embodies these skills uh, that they have these aha moments that really change who we are as individuals as well as a group. And the fact is, is that we're in a world that is busyness, 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 busyness. We are so busy until we can't take the time to reflect, to go do that inner work that needs to be done. And I see what ETST is doing marvelously and wonderfully is that inner work that needs to be done. So I just want to say how much I appreciate uh, Arun, the presentation, all of the stories and testimonies. It really is um, a aha moment for I hope many of us on this call. So thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you so much. Susan, you're next. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. What an incredible presentation. Thank you all for what you're doing in your schools. You've now been around for 30 years, and I'm wondering what stories you have from students who have been in your schools. I, I just wanted to get kind of that next layer down of stories, if you have any that you can share. Thank you. Sita, would you like to talk to that and then maybe Kiran? Uh, no, Sangeeta might have some. Sangeeta, okay, Sangeeta, right, okay. But Sita and Sangeeta both could, yeah. Yeah, 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 thanks. So, yeah, Sangeeta, you go ahead, then Sita. What is it doing to the children? Yeah, give an example of uh, an impact on some of the children in your schools. I can see the change every day whenever we complete a program and uh, children come up or every day when we do the quiet time and some sharings happen. Like uh, I can say that the violence has reduced a lot. Violence means among the children, among the boys, they uh, hit each other out of whatever uh, problems they might be having, some frustrations. But uh, many children have come out and uh, accepted that they have done something wrong to someone and they have resolved not to repeat it. This happens every day in our sharings. And some major changes, I can say that there was a boy who was absolutely very, very ill behaved and teachers wanted him to be out of the school. They were asking me to give him a leaving certificate so that he can go ahead and do his, complete his education privately, not in the school. He cannot be kept in the school. And, um, we took that boy and tried to counsel him and put them put him in some programs uh, and today he he was completely transformed and today like on one side where he would be out of the school uh, he is now doing his physiotherapy and he'll be a doctor very soon mm -hmm. and he very openly and every time whenever he comes to me he says that that if i was not you know influenced by these kind of programs like you know India I care or um, uh, where these children get together and talk about uh, you know conversation cafe kind of programs and it has been impacting many many children in my school I can say every thank day you. we see that yes thank you thank you Sangeeta and Sita anything from your school so I would talk about these two practices the quiet time and the life balance sheet uh, these two things have given a kind of calming effect on this, these young people in our school. 
Uh, we've been doing it for seven, eight years now, especially since the time I started going to ETSD. Quiet time is a, an everyday practice in our school. So and it the day begins with quiet time. And sometimes quiet time is also included with doing your life balance sheet. Like who did you express your care for in the last one week? And who do you think you have to apologize for? These kind of uh, reflections help them to become more calmer, more composed, and which is visible by the parents. So, it, you know, I might say that because of this practice, they're doing very well. But when the parents come back and tell us that, you know, I find my son more understanding and more calming and more composed. So I feel these two practices. Yeah, the other thing I'd like to share is about the India I Care. So yeah. India I Care is, uh, is about instilling a certain sense of responsibility in the young people that I need to do something for nation building. So we have, we called it me and my country, we grow together. So we tell all our young children and the students in the school that, you know, along with you, you have to help the country grow. So they save and earn coins for the country. That's an initiative that we do uh, every year. They should not ask anyone. They should consider it their responsibility to build, you know, so they save coins and one and a half crores now in the last 10 years. Well, how much would that be? US dollars, Arunji, I can't quickly <laughs> convert it into dollars. But few million, few million yeah, dollars. Yeah, few millions of uh, dollars they have saved and earned and they donate it for the education of less privileged children like them. So I just feel the influence that I have from ETST, I, I somehow take it to the school and I have a lot of conversations with them. So I feel good that this generation is somehow having a calming effect on them and they're more composed. That's what I would say. Thank you. Thank you, Sita. Wonderful. Arun, wonderful. Arun I would like to share. Um, yes. Yeah. Sita yeah. just now mentioned about coin or the country that yes, they have. Yes, yes. And yes, it yes. was in this ETST that she had shared this practice. Right, and, right. Yes. And our principal was in that meeting. And yes. She yes. took it back and she spoke to her teachers and uh -huh. we have initiated that program too. So Beautiful. I feel that this is what sharing of best practices is all about. And Excellent. I'm really happy that uh, ETSD has created a platform for everybody to openly share their practices and uh, for the other parts of India people because Sita is not in Maharashtra. She is yeah, in uh, Andhra Pradesh and Bangalore. But yes. in Maharashtra, we have started that. Uh, that was one. And the other is uh, a meaning to uh, compassionate service to society. Uh -huh. I think after the ETSD experience, uh, our schools have started uh, teaching English, especially during the pandemic. They use the virtual platform to reach out to the underprivileged uh, children. And they were surprised to see the homes of these children because yeah. there would be so much noise. Whereas uh, our children were very comfortable in their homes and that shocked them. And it was a two way because um, uh, our English medium children taught them English and the Canada medium children taught the English medium children Canada. So we did not make them feel that somebody was high or low, but a sort of a friendship we created. And I think ever since then, the um, um, rural and urban connect has started uh, with uh, the ETST, I mean, IOFC's Grampari. They have a team in IOFC. That team works with the educators team and uh, beautiful programs are happening. Our schools are part of that program. And of Please. course, quiet time has really changed because ours is a very a large school and the rooms are not very uh, large. The school is not very large. But then because of this quiet time, we were able to save on noise. And um, children, by the time they go home, they are really quiet. We are not hyper. So this is what our parents told us, that what magic are you doing? 
And nice. uh, this is all because of uh, ETSD. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Malti. And Merida, you have your hand up for a question. We have about 10 minutes to go. And yes, please, yeah. Merida. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering about the structure, and maybe I missed it during the presentation, but is ETST taught to teachers or only principals to the whole school community? What kind of format does it take? Kiran? Right. Yeah, um, I wonder if one of the actual edu educators would answer that, but I could also. Um, yeah, we uh, I think we generally have a mix of uh, teachers uh, who run classes and subjects and the principals or vice principals or headmasters. Uh, you know, these designations vary. They are the main uh, participants in a typical ETST. Uh, once in a while, we may have a uh, management representative also, uh, maybe a trustee, you know, uh, of a private school. Uh, we also sometimes have government officials. Uh, they have come, uh, uh, you know, also uh, those who are uh, responsible for education at the state level. So, but uh, primarily the teachers and the principals are the main participants. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. And also recently, the uh, government of Maharashtra has been sending a lot of senior professors and educators from colleges to undergo a similar kind of program. That's a new development in the last one year yes. in the at the university level now, the educators at the university level. Okay. That, that program is called Ethics and Values in Higher Education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank and, you. Yeah. Cecilia. Yes, please. hi everyone. Hi, Cecilia, go ahead. Uh, I just want to know a little bit more, how do you uh, involve parents in all the program? Because I, I just hear that principals and teachers and some other members uh, participate in the workshop, but parents? Sure, uh, Sangeeta, uh, Rekha and Sangeeta, you want to respond to yeah. that? So we do have special programs for parents also. So we have programs like for effective parenting. And sometimes we take up topics that they need to focus on and the entire session revolves around that topic. So if we are talking about better parenting, sometimes it could be focusing on child abuse. Sometimes it could be uh, focusing on learning disabilities because a lot of parents want to learn about that also. So we take it as per the demands and we do have it in uh, schools in Bombay or in local places wherever we are called to conduct these programs also. So they don't have to come all the way to Asia Plateau but depending on the local needs, we, you know, frame up those uh, programs and depending on the schools also, the need of the school. So we name it ETSC, but we say ETSC for parents or ETSC for students. Accordingly, we do it. Thank you, Rekha. Briefly, Sangeeta, and then Ole has a question. Uh, we just involve uh, parents who sometimes we need special care for certain students. Then we involve parents in this kind of programs, and especially pre-primary school parents well, to be called up. And you know, we have certain meetings with them sometimes, once in a month or something. So in this way, they know what we are doing in the school. And parents also know that these practices are being uh, conducted in school. Yes. And Malti's school, yeah. uh, school system yeah. actually ran a whole mindful parenting program. And we still run it. We yeah. still run it. Yeah. Thank we you. We still run it. And in fact, now we have uh, an IOFC ex uh, staff member called Sachin Beloshe. So, uh -huh. in one of our schools, he has introduced quiet time with the teachers and the parents. Wonderful. And uh, he's doing wonderful work there and Great. on relationships for parents. Mm. So, we are slowly starting it in individual schools. Yeah. So uh, Merida has a question in the chat box, but before that, Ola, would you like to ask your question? Yeah, I, I'm impressed by what you're doing and also what you just talked about for parenting. And I see similar initiatives in other countries. And I wonder, are you 
exchanging experiences with other organizations in India or outside India to kind of develop a best practice and sharing best practices beyond India. Yeah, so I'd like to respond to that. Ola, this is exactly where your map of co-creators comes in. This is exactly where youth collaborating for compassion comes in, appreciative inquiry, you know, really mapping who are the best practice people in the world in parenting, bringing them together online, bringing them together. In fact, this is something I'm passionate about. And so, and we'll be working with you to make this happen. And we'll discuss this in our visioning for the next uh, decade, which we're going to do in early December. But thanks for raising this. And Merida uh, has asked a question. Kiran, uh, yeah. I think Merida question. is... I'll just there. read the question. Uh, can can ETSP the... workshops be totally implemented online to teachers and principals and etc.? That's the question. Yeah. Anybody so... would like to respond to that? Any of the educators? Yeah, I just wrote yeah. yes, because we did a lot of workshops during the pandemic. Yeah. And I think ETSC really grew during the pandemic because the wonderful workshops we had. Yes. And we yes. could reach out to more people. And though we say there is no eye contact and no physical moment, I think we really did a good job by reaching out. We could see the, you know, very closely, even yes. far away. People. It was wonderful experience. In fact, in 2019, Guru Prem attended, was one of the attendees of uh, mm. Collaboration for Compassion, in which ETSD Charter for Compassion, we all came together. And if I remember right, about 120 people attended. Marilyn addressed us to awesome conference, very, very effective, and we can think of it more. It is possible. Having said that... I'm wondering if it can come to Mexico or go to California, where we have groups of schools. We are, our bags are packed. Just call us. We'll come. <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> we are waiting. Okay. So uh, we just have one more minute. So Marilyn, if there's anything you want to share, and we'll close then with a big thank you to everyone. Right. Absolutely. A big thank you. Um, Arun mentioned uh, about the map of co-creators. And I think that every single person who is on the screen here, uh, and Arun, if you could share this with sure. other people in the community, sure, uh, I will. should yes. be part of the, the map of co-creators. And there is uh, on the chat, there's a link to that map. As importantly, there's something else that we have that's also a new program, and it's called the Grassroots Wisdom Book. And each person on this Zoom call, I'm sure, has a program in their school uh, or within an organization that they belong that is really a very special program that can be explained very simply. But the only thing that we're asking as people write and put entries into the Grassroots Wisdom book, I've also put the link there uh, for you to check it out. And I sure. really expect that we're going to get a lot of stories from this group. You know, yeah. what has been a yes. successful program that can be yes. implemented, replicated, altered in some mm -hmm. way in other communities around the world? And right. this is where the map comes in, where you have Excellent. an opportunity to actually talk with people who have done these things, yes. share yes. ideas. And, um, you know, Sika, that uh, this is a, I too am, am someone who all the time is, is looking at new ways of doing things. And yes. this has been such an inspiring uh, opportunity for us today. And I think we will certainly uh, sit down with a room and explore how is it that uh, we can save the carbon footprint and do something oh. online. Um, so we'll, we'll look thank forward you. to that. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Marilyn. You thank you so much. And Kiran, uh, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I just uh, wanted to clarify that while uh, the ETST participants are largely the teachers and principals, it, the ultimate stakeholders of ETST are the children. Yeah. And uh, we believe that uh, when the teachers role model the right values and the creativity, uh, then, you know, that is transferred to the children. 
and uh, they are the ultimate beneficiaries. And one of the aspect of benefit that we had envisioned right in the beginning was that good education should lead to healthy self-esteem of the children. Yes. Because in yes. India, we have found that uh, self-esteem is threatened by the way education is run also and uh, the way society is functioning. So yes. uh, that, is, that has been one of our very uh, base level objectives in ETST. I just thought I'll add that at the end. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so thank you, everyone. Thank you, all the presenters. Thank you, Charter for Compassion. Thank you, all those who attended. And wish you a nice evening, morning, day, wherever you are. And may we all work together for creating a better world through serving education. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And please unmute and say thank you and bye. Whatever. So we make a bit of noise. Bye bye. Thank you all. Bye. 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 B